Number 1. USB-A USB-A is the classic rectangular port that solved one of tech's messiest problems, the cable nightmare of the 90s. Back before USB became standard, every device had its own unique connector. Printers had one shape, cameras had another, keyboards had something completely different. It created a giant mess of incompatible cables, and if you lost one, good luck finding a replacement that actually fit. USB-A helped clean all that up by becoming the main connector for everyday devices. The design of USB-A is pretty wide and flat, with a metal housing and a plastic tongue inside. And yes, for some reason, it's almost impossible to plug it in correctly the first time. People joke that USB-A has three orientations, wrong, wrong again, and then finally right. Even though it's not reversible like USB-C, it remained the standard for years because manufacturers trusted it, people understood it, and it worked reliably. But while the shape stayed the same, the technology behind it kept evolving. The earliest version, USB 1.0, only transferred data at 12 megabits per second, which is extremely slow by today's standards. USB 2.0, with its typical black port, increased that to 480 megabits per second and became the most widely used one in everything from laptops to game consoles. Then USB 3.0, usually marked in blue, boosted speeds to 5 gigabits per second. Later, improvements like USB 3.1 and USB 3.2 pushed that even further to 10 gigabits per second, all while keeping the same USB-A shape. Even today, many desktops, laptops, and accessories still include USB-A because it's simple, cheap to manufacture, and compatible with millions of existing gadgets. Number 2. USB 1.0 and 2.0 Before USB ports became the all-in-one super connectors we rely on today, the early days were defined by USB 1.0 and USB 2.0. Slow, simple, and weirdly charming. These standards didn't move data quickly, but they did something far more important. They made computers feel less like puzzles and more like tools normal humans could use. USB 1.0 slash 1.1, introduced in the late 90s, wasn't about impressive performance. It was about ending the nightmare of proprietary connectors and driver CDs the size of pizza boxes. Suddenly, you could plug in a mouse, a printer, or a scanner without needing to crack open your PC case or install drivers from three different floppy disks. For many people, this was their first experience with true plug-and-play, the moment computers stopped feeling like they required an engineering degree. Then USB 2.0 arrived in 2000 and suddenly everything got easier. Flash drives exploded in popularity. People wore them on lanyards like badges of honor. Loading up an MP3 player with your carefully curated LimeWire playlist took minutes instead of entire evenings. Printers, webcams, external hard drives, even those old plug-in game controllers, all ran on USB 2.0's black ports, which quickly became the standard everywhere. What makes USB 2.0 iconic is how stubbornly it has stayed relevant. Even in 2025, motherboards ship with a couple of USB 2.0 ports because your mouse and keyboard don't need gigabit speeds to function. They just need reliability, something the slow era delivered surprisingly well. USB 2.0 didn't change how fast we move data. It changed who could actually use a computer in the first place. Number 3. USB-B Family The USB-B family is the chunkier side of USB connectors, mostly found on peripherals like printers, scanners, and external hard drives. Unlike USB-A, which is the standard port on computers and laptops, USB-B is designed for the devices that connect to your computer. Its squarish, almost boxy shape with beveled corners makes it obvious which way it goes. You can't plug it in the wrong port by accident. Then we got Mini-B, a smaller version that showed up when devices started shrinking. Remember your old digital cameras, MP3 players, or even the PS3 controller? Yep, Mini-B was their lifeline. It's compact, fits comfortably on portable gadgets, and supports data transfer at speeds up to 480 megabits per second with USB 2.0. Next came Micro-B even flatter and smaller, taking over smartphones, tablets, and other compact gadgets. It handled USB 2.0 speeds and could do both data transfer and charging in one port, basically multitasking before multitasking was cool. But here's where it gets interesting, Micro-B 3.0. This port added a little extra on the side with additional pins, supporting USB 3.0 speeds up to 5 gigabits per second, 10 times faster than USB 2.0. You'd mostly find these on external hard drives and some tablets, though they never became as common as regular Micro-B, 
and honestly, most people were just relieved when USB-C eventually replaced the whole awkward family. Number 4. USB-C USB-C is the reversible connector that basically does everything. Phones, laptops, monitors, game controllers, even some cars. It can carry data, video, and power all at once. One cable to rule them all. Though, spoiler alert, it's not always that simple. Sometimes you plug it in expecting blazing fast speeds and wonder why your old hard drive is crawling along. That's where Thunderbolt comes in, but more on that later. What makes USB-C special is that it's reversible. No more flipping the cable three times before it finally fits. It supports high-speed data transfer, power delivery, and even video output through standards like DisplayPort or HDMI alternate modes. For example, USB-C with USB 3.2 can hit 20 gigabits per second, while USB 4 bumps that up to 40 gigabits per second, enough to drive a 4K monitor at 120 Hz or two 4K displays at once. Power delivery is another game changer. USB-C can deliver up to 100 watts. USB PD 3.0, enough to charge laptops that used to need bulky proprietary adapters. That means your phone charger can double as your laptop charger, if your device supports it, of course. USB-C has also become the mandatory EU standard in 2024, which means every new phone, tablet, and portable device sold in Europe has this port. And that is technically an end to the different charger-for-every-gadget nightmare of the past decade. Number 5. USB 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2 USB 3 is where things got noticeably faster and noticeably more confusing. At first, everything was straightforward. USB 3.0 came out in 2008 with 5 gigabits per second speeds and those familiar blue ports. This was the upgrade that finally made transferring big files not feel like a punishment. Manufacturers even labeled it super speed, and for once, the name actually made sense. Then in 2013, USB 3.1 arrived, doubling the speed at 10 gigabits per second and sometimes coming in a teal-colored port. It was also called Super Speed Plus, which sounds like a subscription service but was just the faster version. So far, not too bad. But then the USB IF, the organization in charge of naming these things, decided to make everyone suffer. Instead of simply calling the updates 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2, they renamed everything multiple times. USB 3.0 to USB 3.1 Gen 1 to USB 3.2 Gen 1. USB 3.1 to USB 3.1 Gen 2 to USB 3.2 Gen 2. USB 3.2, the newest one, became USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which goes up to 20 gigabits per second. Yes, the same ports, same shape, same connector, but each one somehow ended up with two or three names. It's like they wanted spec sheets to feel like exam questions. To make it even more confusing, manufacturers started mixing colors, blue, teal, red, sometimes even black USB 3 ports. So if you ever looked at your laptop and wondered, why does this port look like a Skittles flavor pack? That's why. The good news? No matter the name, USB 3 ports are all fast and backward compatible. The bad news? Understanding which gen you actually have often feels harder than the math homework you forgot to do back in high school. Number 6. USB 4 USB 4 is where USB finally stopped messing around and decided to grow up. After years of confusing names and too many gen labels to keep track of, USB 4 arrived in 2019 with one goal clean up the chaos. And honestly, it did a pretty good job. First, USB 4 is USB-C only. No more Type-A. No more bulky Type-B shapes. Just the modern, reversible connector everyone already uses on phones, laptops, and half the gadgets you've bought in the last five years. But here's the catch. Not every USB-C port is USB 4. Some ports look identical but only support USB 2.0. Yes, visually identical ports with 200x different speeds, a classic USB move that refuses to die. So always check for USB 4 branding or specifications before assuming you've got the fastest port. When you do have USB 4 though, it's fast. The first version reaches 40 gigabits per second, which is the same speed as Thunderbolt 3 because, fun fact, USB 4 is literally built on Thunderbolt 3 technology. Then in 2022, Things got even crazier with USB 4 version 2.0, boosting speeds to 80 gigabits per second with a special asymmetric mode that can hit 120 gigabits per second in one direction. Yes, you heard that right. Triple the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 4. But USB 4 isn't just about raw speed. It can handle DisplayPort, PCIe tunneling, 
high-resolution displays, external GPUs, and even up to 240 watts of power delivery. That means one cable can charge your laptop, send video to your monitor, transfer files at insane speeds, and still have bandwidth left over. It's like the overachiever of USB standards. USB 4 is the closest we've ever gotten to the dream of one port that does everything. It's the end game of USB standards and the foundation for future devices, especially as more laptops switch entirely to USB C. And honestly, after the USB 3 naming disaster, this level of simplicity feels like a miracle. Number 7. Thunderbolt Thunderbolt is the connector that looks exactly like USB C but secretly does way more behind the scenes. It's developed by Intel and Apple, and starting from Thunderbolt 3, it uses the same USB-C shape, which is why so many people confuse the two. The easiest way to tell them apart is simple. If you see a small lightning bolt symbol next to the port, that's Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 both run at 40 gigabits per second, which already puts them ahead of most USB versions. They can handle high-resolution monitors, fast external SSDs, and even external GPUs letting thin laptops suddenly act like desktop gaming PCs. And unlike normal USB-C, Thunderbolt can daisy-chain multiple displays, meaning one cable from your laptop can feed several monitors in a row. Then came Thunderbolt 5 in 2024, and this one turned the speed dial way past normal. It reaches 80 gigabits per second and can even jump to 120 gigabits per second in certain high-bandwidth situations. Basically enough power to run multiple 4K displays at high refresh rates without breaking a sweat. It also supports up to 240 watts charging, making it overkill in the best possible way. The only annoying part? Not every USB-C port supports Thunderbolt. Some laptops have one Thunderbolt port, some have two, and some have USB-C ports that look identical but are actually just regular USB with much lower speeds. So people plug in a pricey Thunderbolt SSD expecting lightning-fast performance and get normal USB-C speeds instead. It's not your fault. The ports just look the same. But whenever you do have Thunderbolt, you instantly know you're working with the top tier. Faster data, more displays, more power, more everything. It's basically USB-C on steroids. Just remember to check for that little lightning bolt. Number 8. Port Colors now, I know that after hearing about so many USB types and versions, the ports themselves might start blending together. And since manufacturers love making things harder than they need to be, USB ports come in different colors, each hinting at what speed or feature it supports. It's not a perfect system, but it does help you quickly figure out what's what. White, USB 1.X. This is basically a prehistoric USB. If you find a white port today, it's probably on a PC that also has a floppy drive hiding somewhere. Maxes out at 12 megabits per second. Black, USB 2.0. Still extremely common. Keyboards, mice, webcams, they don't need crazy speeds, so black ports are everywhere. 480 megabits per second is plenty for simple peripherals. Blue, USB 3.0, USB 3.2 Gen 1. The Super Speed Classic, 5 gigabits per second. If you're plugging in an external drive or anything that moves real data, blue is the safe option. Teal, USB 3.1, USB 3.2 Gen 2. These can reach 10 gigabits per second. Not every manufacturer sticks to the teal color, but when you see it, it usually means you're looking at one of the faster ports. Red, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. High speed ports. Supports 20 gigabits per second. Some boards use red to make sure you don't accidentally plug your fast SSD into a regular blue port and wonder why the transfer is slower than your expectations. Yellow slash orange, always on charging. These stay powered even when the computer is off or asleep. Perfect for charging your phone overnight without keeping your whole PC running. Basically the I'll handle it ports. So yeah, colors won't solve every USB mystery, but at least now you know which ports are built for speed and which ones are just along for the ride. And that's it for the types of USB ports. Every generation has its place, from the slow USB 1.X to the all-in-one USB-C and USB 4. But here's the thing. While USB-C can transfer data insanely fast, your storage speed matters just as much. M.2, NVMe, PCIe, SATA, AHCI. If those sound like random letters instead of real tech, you're not alone. And picking the wrong SSD type is worse than picking the wrong USB cable. In the next video, we're breaking down every SSD type in plain language. What each one actually means, which one's fastest, and which one you should buy. Click the video on the screen now and I'll see you there.